Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Feely Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. This evening we have with us Mike Duncan. Welcome, Mike. How you doing? And you are with the Fatherhood is Sacred program. Yes, I am. But before we talk about the program, tell me about your tribes. Oh, well, I'm our people are from Round Valley, which is Covalo, California. It's up towards Ukiah Willits, up Northern California, and we're a confederate of tribes. So there's not just one tribe exactly in our, in our, on our reservation. Well, we're actually one of the oldest reservations in California. Hmm. Um, but we're compared to six tribes who are driven in by the U.S. government. Um, the one that I notably um, I'm recognized for is our Konkau Maidu side, and that's uh, we're originally from Bald Rock, and that's normally in the uh, Oroville area. Oh, okay. And how long did you live there growing up? Oh, we were actually in and out. Um, mm -hmm. I was really, I was, I was raised in Sacramento, California, mm -hmm. um, but our, a lot of family still lives there. Um, I was just there recently, and we'll talk about about the the Nome Cult Walk. And Nome Cult Walk is, is our, a walk for for us as a it's a it's our memory of that we walked the original trails that that the government uh, marched our people into. Um, my great great grandmother walked on that trail, um, mm -hmm. and you know walking that trail it takes seven days. It's a, it's a hundred and thirteen miles. The Black Buttes. Uh, it's it's um, a very beautiful walk, and at the same time, very powerful and spiritual, uh, knowing that you know you're walking the same steps as your ancestors. But um, going there and going uh, going back home, you know, and, and seeing family is something that I've always uh, I, I really love doing, and it's a it's a very so beautiful tell place. Tell me about the original walk. Well, um, the original walk was you know um, like I said, there's they were they wanted our land, looking for gold. Um, and uh, they, they, they round up the Indians and so uh, they rounded them all up and they walked them on this walk and for them it was uh, like I said it's, a, it's 113 miles and it's very treacherous to, um, you know we had breaks we had you know stop for water and mm -hmm. but um, a lot of t they walked us on the walk our, our ancestors and you know they, they fed us water that they knew were, the water was contaminated mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the women uh, the children, the elders, got sick on that walk, and um, so that they, if they if they got sick and they just left them behind, or I've heard stories they would tie them to trees mm -hmm. until the wild boars would get them. Oh my goodness! And or if there were elders, they would shoot them, or they they just they just exterminate them right there on that on that trail. Um, you had the 451 that uh, originally went on that trail, 200. Um, a little oh, yeah, over 200 um, people made it. I uh, made it to the reservation, mm -hmm. and when on the reservation, um, there were, like I said, there's six uh, Confederate tribes there um, that typically didn't get along. So you know, of course, you know that kind of started the uh, the chaos, that, but just within in between the tribes. Ah, so you force them to live together. Yeah, force them to live together. And the commemorative walk is done annually. It's done er annually. I, think, I believe uh, this is the this year was the nineteenth year, and next year will be the twentieth anniversary, which they're, expect they're expecting a big turnout. So is I'll there a particular out. month? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's always the second weekend of uh, second week of September, um, and it goes for seven days. Oh so it's from goodness. Sunday to Saturday. Yeah. How many people go on it normally? Well, this year we had, I think we counted uh, a little over forty. Um, it was very inspiring because we had uh, not adults, um, we had elders, mm -hmm. um, we had uh, women carrying their children. Wow! So there was a, there was so many different um, uh, um, different types of people walking. Uh -huh. There were non-natives walking. It was very one thing that was very interesting. There's a there was 
um, there, there was a couple stops where people came out and like gave us dinner or lunch or whatnot. And there was a original, some of the people came out that were the original, like ancestors of the original family who were non-native that came out and fed us lunch. So their ancestors, seen us walking on the trail, stopped, fed us, gave us water, you know, you know, and took care of us. Mm -hmm. And so their great, great, you know, I guess great, great grandchildren are doing the same thing for us. Wow. So it was very powerful. Yeah, yes. it was very powerful. Yeah. Huh, something. Now tell me, fatherhood is sacred, and it mm -hmm. is. Tell me about the program. Oh, it's a very, it's a very awesome program. Um, it's not my program. Uh, it's a, it's a curriculum that's run out of uh, Arizona. Um, founder was Al, Al Pulley um, out of NAFA, as a Native American Fathers and Families Association. And um, what I've been training for last about the last five years or so, and I do the program in Sacramento. Uh, I've been in that program in Sacramento for the last five years. And then uh, I started about two and a half years ago in Stockton, California, and now I'm in San Jose. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of this year, 2014. Um, the program is, is, is very unique um, c compared to other um, uh, curriculums that I've, that I've experienced, mm -hmm. that, I've, that I've used. Um, and, and what makes it unique is that it's really cultural and it's not really telling a person how to be a parent, but really looking inside and really understand what we're teaching our children. And so a lot of times uh, what he emphasizes that a lot of times we're um, looked at or talked about by, by other modalities that we're sick, there's something wrong with us, and there's nothing wrong with us, mm -hmm. you know. But using the culture and using the medicines is something that we use as our healing, and to look at our our, our attributes and, and just expanding on those, the good stuff, you know. Um, really focusing on the part of love and forgiveness. I really, those are the parts I really truly enjoy working with the families and the and, and the fathers, um, especially. So the you fathers. work with families, not just the fathers. Absolutely. Um, it started with um, just the men. Mm -hmm. um, but what we notice is that <laughs> that the women feel like, well, what about us? You know, the motherhood is sacred too, and so that's so why we invite the women in because so they can get the same message. Because uh, maybe the man has been abusive, maybe they have been in jail, um, addictions, or you know, so forth, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and and we, as we know, that sometimes that even all that uh, dysfunction, the woman will, will never leave. They'll, they'll still stay together, and then the children see that, and then. The, the, the cycle continues. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we, we'll tell those men, try this, try that, you know, try these different things at home. And then they'll go home and the woman will be looking at them like, you know, what, did you, what, what are you up to, you know? <laughs> so we invite the women in and then, so that way they can hear the same message and then they can understand that they're teachers too. And, and, and really understand the, the part that, the, the sacredness of, of parenthood, of fatherhood and motherhood. And, and one thing I like to emphasize and, and what Al Pulley talks about a, a lot is that when we talk about sacred, we're like women, like we know they're the life givers. Mm -hmm. We understand that part. And then the second part would be that they bring innocence into the world. So every time a woman has a child, they bring innocence. And, and our job as men is to protect that innocence, not the other way around. And so like where I've been in communities and I've been in, um, and in um, uh, urban areas where we try to toughen up our kid to live in this tough world mm -hmm. instead of trying to enhance that in innocence and to bring more innocence to the world to make it a better place. And so where we start, for us, we start in home and then we work outside. So what, was, what our example in Sacramento is that we started with two guys, me and another gentleman, which his name is Eddie Navarro, and uh, now it's grown. We have about 18 people. And that's, you know, so we have families come, um, we have the other mothers come, we have elders. We have youth. Um, so there's no age range in particular that you work with? Yeah, I work with um, some youth come because they, they don't have a father figure at home mm -hmm. and they just like the positiveness and, and we, like I said, we, we use med the medicine, we burn sage or we burn root, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so they like that part of it. Um, and then with the, with, with the elders, they just like to hear the message. You know, mm -hmm. they like to hear the message. And then they, they always said they always got to be reminded too. They, they always say that. And that's what we're in training for. We're, we're training to be well elders. You know, I mean, that's what mm -hmm. I always try to preach to the families. Like we're we're in training, so we got to learn that. You know. And how long is the program? It, you mentioned earlier it's ongoing, or. Oh yeah, well, the the curriculum goes twelve weeks. Um, I like to do fourteen weeks. Um, the twelve weeks is just the curriculum, but I always like to do an orientation part. And with the the first week is an orientation. I, I give rules to the program. Like, you know, for me, I'm, I'm, you know, no drugs or alcohol, no, no cussing, you know, and all these different things that you need to make group norms, you know. 
And then, um, but also I do, a, I do a film or I do a presentation on historical trauma. And um, I like to call it more of a dismantling the family. Understand why, how dismantling the family was part of the trauma. And how now, like even after we call it, we, we talk about trauma like trauma was a long time ago. No, right, right, actually right now we're living in trauma mm -hmm. with all the stuff that's going on, like with the abuse and, and um, even with um, the Indian Child Welfare Act, you know, all these different things are happening with our youth and teen suicides and, and all these different things are happening. Um, we have to understand that, that the, the seed's been planted. You know, these things that happened in the past, they were meant to dismantle our families, you know. Um, the positiveness of that is that we have opportunity, like what's our, what's our role now? You know, what's our purpose right now? How is our generation going to be remembered mm -hmm. to making things better? Are we just going to sit back and allow it to continue, or are we going to make a difference? And, and that's one thing I try to emphasize with the trauma, not dwelling on the past, not looking at the past, like blaming the past, because it is what it is. But what are we doing now to change that for our, our future generations, you know, seven generations? And I, I always tell the guys and the women to think seven generations, our great, great, great grandchildren, mm -hmm. you know, our ancestors, we'll be their ancestors, and how are they going to talk about us? You know, the stories, you know, like, oh my, he, they were doing this program, they, and it became a way of life, and that's what we're trying to, truly really trying to... Uh, so they could pass emphasize. that on, that history. Exactly, and I, and I work in different areas, and so, you know, I work in, like I said, urban areas where there's individuals come in, and they, they own nothing about the culture, they know they're native, they're, mm -hmm. maybe their tribes back east, or, and so one thing is, like, bringing that culture in, like using the songs, you know, using, uh, use like burning the medicine so they know, mm -hmm. they know what that smell smells like. And also being really welcoming to them because maybe, s because they don't feel like they're Indian enough, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's one thing I want to emphasize too, is like we don't, I don't, I don't push away anybody in my, in that comes to my program. There's, there's no qualification, you know, uh, because I have non-natives that come too also, if they're raising native children, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that I, if you're gonna raise native kids, come come know what we're about. You know, it's really important that you know too. So, you're not just um, if they if they have questions, they could ask you. you know, I have a friend on Facebook, and he just started posting pictures of when he was a little kid, and it was him and all little white kids, you know. And then he said, "I was raised by a white Mormon family," and I hadn't he hadn't seen those pictures before. They just sent them to him. And he goes, that's why I tried to be a super Indian after, you know, <laughs> he said, because I was raised in a white Mormon family. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the historical trauma of being taken away from the families that a lot of, you know, the kids face now, or even mm -hmm. adults. Yeah. And they have a hard time dealing with that and then raising their own kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is, you're right, absolutely right. And I think part of it is we think there's this big answer to this, but it's the simplicity of things that we, how we live, mm -hmm. you know, and, and our thinking. You know, it's, so it's, it's really different from modern modalities if we look at how, um, how we're trying to counsel people, you know, or how we're trying to heal our people. It's the simple things. It's the simple things that make a difference. Um, one thing that I was uh, involved with, uh, with my, nor Native, my organization, which is called Native Dads Network, uh, with a couple other organizations, we did a men's gathering. It's called Returning the Warrior Spirit, which is held in Buena Vista Rancheria out in, uh, in Ione. And um, we had, last year we had about 40 men show up last year um, and 60 on Saturday, it's, three day, it's a three day camp out. Mm -hmm. And really what the, we're talking about his, you know, returning the warrior spirit, what we're trying to talk about is those things that you're talking about. So, you know, even coming, maybe coming, somebody coming from the reservation and, and, and being involved with maybe all the culture, mm -hmm. but still having so much dysfunction in, the, in their community, you know, and then bringing somebody from an urban area that is living somewhat well in recovery, but has no connection to, to um, culture, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and kind of bringing that all together and, and talking about subjects that are very, um, that are uh, dysfunctional, but that, that can be addressed. That, mean, that needs to be addressed with the men. And um, because our, our feeling is that um, the women have been holding this up for a very long time. And for us men, we, we, need, we, need, to, we need to contribute to that healing, you know, and so, uh, because programs are really focused on the on the mothers, which they they're very mm -hmm. much needed. They're, they they are needed. They're focused on the youth, which they are very much needed. And what happens with the men is that when they make a mistake, they feel shameful. They're um, or something happens. They, they get that guilt in them, um, incarceration or whatever. We're kind of banned, you know. And there's nothing for them to to fall back on. Or somebody say it's okay. We forgive you. Um, and so this, this gathering is really to do that, to heal, you know. 
Um, and so this year, I'm proud to say we had um, 80, a little over 80 people, uh, men, show from all communities, from um, Grindstone, Cortina, um, Point Arena, Bear River, um, around, uh, around Lake County, you know, Elim, uh, Big Valley, and Sacramento, and Stockton, and uh, so, and, and all different nations from, from other places, from, especially from the urban areas, they brought a lot of people from different areas, but it was very powerful, you know, a lot of tears, a lot of healing, but it, it, and I was just telling somebody on the way, on the way here is that, um, you know, one thing that I, I recognize is that every person that was there out of the, about 90% of the men that are there, I have a personal relationship with, you know, that this thing that we're doing called fatherhood is sacred. We're talking about mm -hmm. healing we're talk is, is it makes sense because mm -hmm. we're basing it all on truth, you know. We're looking at our role as men and what can we do to help our women, not only our women, our children, and not only our children, our future generations. And, and really expanding on that, saying, okay, well, you take this message and you go home with it. You, not, you, start, with, you start in your home, you share this message at home. Then, you, then you, after you get it at home and you, and, you, and you feed this information to your children, then you have them tell their friends. Mm -hmm. And that's how it grows. That's how, it, that's how all this grows. Mm -hmm. But you know, I had I attended some meetings recently with the county and social services, and they were talking about how, when they do intakes on women, they always say, "Do you have children? Do you have?" They never ask the men, "Do you have children?" Mm. At any point, and they start saying, "We should," yeah. you know, because we're kind of taking them away from the fatherhood aspect of their life. You know, it's uh, mm. it belongs to the woman, the women only, and they never ask them. You know, do you have children? You know, are you raising children? Or you know, and, and I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to throw that in before, but <laughs> I don't want to do too much. Um, no, I, I have five children, um, and that's how kind of like all this started. I think, like I said, um, my past is is not pretty. You know, I have a I have a history of incarcerations, addiction, um, and depression, and all those things that, that we talked about mm -hmm. that could be troubling men, guilt, shame, and you know. Um, I did, a, I did a stretch, and I was, in, I was in, in incarcerated. And I, I remember getting out and deciding to make that change. I mean, you made a personal um, decision to make that change and didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to the welfare system. I went to the county. I went to all the, because that was all my, all my only resources at that time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. realized that they had nothing for the men, no. not, not one thing. And um, so we were, we were homeless. I was homeless with my two little ones. Um, at that age, they were about 14 months old, and then my daughter was about four months old. And I remember living in this hotel that was like in mm -hmm. the wrong part of town, just put it that way. And, um, and I remember saying, this, this can't be it. Um, and so I went to school. I finally got out of that place, found a place, went to school, and, and became a counselor. And that was my, one of my missions when I fell into this, is um, that I'm going to... I'm gonna help the men that are struggling because mm -hmm. there are some good men out there. There's men that are raising their kids. There's right. men that are doing what they're supposed to be doing, and all we're doing, and I'm not inventing nothing, is just bringing them together. You know, um, that's one thing I didn't miss, I emphasize in Sacramento too. We have a big group, so we have a lot of men that are doing really well, and we have some men that are struggling, mm -hmm. but they all need that, that support. You know, and so um, it's, it's very, it's very interesting now, like sitting here with you, you know, going, well, now I'm, I'm telling my story. And be able to hear more people could hear this this message of uh, fatherhood. It's not the end of the world. You can make it. You can change your life. You can have an impact on your kids' lives. It's not all lost. It, you know the his, mm -hmm. the historical trauma is going to affect a lot of people for a long time. But you can make changes. Yeah, and I, and I totally agree. I, with the historical trauma, I I, I I never get tired of talking about it. You know. Um, I get to understand more about me mm -hmm. and how I how I see the how I see the world. Um, I'm, you know, like we're not using it, and we're not using it as a crutch. You know what I mean? Um, but we have to acknowledge it. Right. And we have to talk about it. I mean, you should be comfortable because even talking about it now, especially when, with the newer groups that I do, I ask them, "How does that make you feel?" I go, "It makes me feel yucky. Even it makes me mad. It makes mm -hmm. me this." And so the, all this stuff is buried, you know. Right. And so um, so we have to continuously talk about it. And explore it, and, and and people can make their own um, judgment how it affects them or how they view it. Um, but we're going to expose it because they're not obviously they're not learning any of this in school, you know, at a young age. So um, so for me, like when I really started understanding trauma, even like when I started being clean and sober, it started going, man, 
no wonder, you know, and, and it's just, things just start making more sense to me. That's the all. The light bulb start going yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can share that, and that's what's good about it. Then someone else can say, hey, well, I have that s had that same experience, mm -hmm. or they can relate to your experiences. Yeah, because, you know, part of it is that when I look at, um, and I don't, I don't know how to really put this, so I'll just say it the way I'm thinking it, is that um, it's, it wasn't all my fault. Mm -hmm. You know, some things I was set up for. I mean, at a young age, and we all, I mean, we all went about choices now that I'm an adult, but we get caught up in this whirlwind, and then, um, then things go bad, and then we don't know how to escape it if we don't have the right support. Right. So f now, like having programs like this, Fatherhood is Sacred, Motherhood is Sacred, it gives them a, a, a sense, like uh, now I'm in trouble. I, what, what I heard is true. I know where to go. And there's somebody saying, it's okay. I forgive you. You know, let's, let's, let's work on that. Instead of saying you're in trouble, you got problems, you got mm -hmm. issues, you know, you need to go here or separating. And so, um, luckily, like I have a like, few men in my group that have the similar stories that are very influential, have a lot of good stories, um, and and so it draws that the attraction draws our people in, mm -hmm. and that's what I continually work on, trying to find those people. How young are the is the age that you work with? As far well. As? <laughs> Um, speaking of Pitt River, I was just in Pitt River. I, I was working with youth in uh, uh, third, fourth grade. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And and, but, and I, they called me in and they asked me, "Could you come in?" And I go, "What do you want me to do?" They do fatherhood, and I'm like, "Okay." And <laughs> and so you know, I did some activities with them. But it's also it's important at, at, at even at that age they understand how, what their role is. I would think so because so many of the young boys are having kids at very young ages. Absolutely. You know. And I don't think they realize it, the the longevity of it. You know, this your this child is yours forever. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And then even at that age, where even like my son, he's 18 years old, mm -hmm. and and I'm, I, the other day I was talking to him and I'm like, you're a child still. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to tell him um, because he's still learning. Right. I mean, right. because we have this thought process like you're 18, you're grown. Well, right. that's a part of it, but I mean. There's the other side, like the spiritual part, the physical, the mental, and the emotional. Are, are you, uh, and that's where you know if you're an adult, if you can handle those, those four things, you know? So he's still working on some things, but I'm, I'm you know, that's the one good thing that because of our relationship, you know, now he's, because of the things I'm telling him, he's, he's absorbing and he's, be able to, and he's able to listen. Now, is this a national program? This is a national program. So from what I understand, he works with over 200 tribes. Um, he's now kind of breaking away and trying to um, get this program into uh, the jails, and so he's breaking away from the training of trainers. Like he's not, he's been the only trainer trainer um, in for the last 10, 12 years. Um, and so this year, I I've been trained to be the trainer of trainers. Mm -hmm. So I was, a, I'm actually the first one in the country, and um, I'm actually the first one on the West Coast. So oh, okay. um, last uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, I did a training out in Porterville with the Tule Reservation. And, um, and work with them and to become training them. So that was actually the first time in the country that someone trained a trained trainer of trainers um, without Al Pooley. Yeah. Oh wow, that's great. So this is done on and off reservation then? Absolutely, absolutely. So like, uh, I mean like the Sacramento's an urban area, Stockton's an urban area, right, San Jose. Um, and San Jose. Yeah, they're all urban areas. Um, the Washoe Tanner, uh, I work with Washoe Tanner mm -hmm. here. And, um, and an uh, IHS and then mm -hmm. and, and Santa Clara and I go out there and do a, a program every Wednesday nights from 5:30 mm -hmm. to 7:30 here in San Jose. Mm, that's great. Um, do you see it in the schools at all, or is it just kind of a program, uh, community service type program? It's been community so far. Nothing in the schools. Um, back home, uh, what they are doing that is I thought was powerful. Uh, is that they're doing a red row program, which is a 12-step program. Mm -hmm. and they're, it's actually one of their electives. They can, uh, uh, really? Uh, yeah, in the, wow. hi, in the high schools. And so it's very, it's very edgy, uh -huh. but it's, it's every community. I mean, what community w wouldn't benefit from that? You mm -hmm. know? So, Absolutely. Yeah. And do you see much of a difference from the participants on the reservation off the, re off the reservation? <coughs> Not much. Yeah. Not much. Um, you know, uh, one thing it is, it's just like Indian people, they, 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 it's, a tr it's a trust thing. They got to know who you are, who your family, what, and once they kind of fill you out and they see that it's genuine, then they're, they're, it catches their interest, you know, like anybody else. I mean, mm -hmm. But and in the country, it's a little different, you know that. Um, but no, that, I mean, the problems are all the same, but the solutions are all the same also. 
And so that's the one thing that we've been, that's one thing that um, I try to emphasize wherever I go. Do many of the participants come back as trainers or to work as in a mentorship capacity? Yes, we actually have one individual now in my group in Sacramento that is, um, he's a train, tra a train, he's a trainer now. And he actually, he's doing the group when I'm gone um, on travel. And so he's, he's doing a very good job, you know, he's, uh, he's been with me since the beginning. And he has mm -hmm. actually has the same vision that I have, you know, with all this. Um, other er locations, um, we, we put it out there. You know that I can only be be out probably be out here for so long, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm, it's like finding somebody that's really passionate and uh, willing to to do the curriculum and, and sacrifice a little bit. You know, because it's, it's it's tough. You know, yeah. working with people it is tough because of all the stuff that goes along with it. You know, um, you know I had uh, recently suicide um, in our in our group. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I. I I can't tell you how many people I've lost, you know what I mean, and I've worked with, you know what I mean, in the, in the last five years, but I could definitely tell you how many people I've lost, you know, and through, you know, death, right. uh, overdose, incarceration, or in mental health. It's, it's, it's tough. But, you know, um, so there's people that are interested in, in doing this, um, but that's, that's where I come in and try to help them, mentor them, and try to... Wow. I guess we have to focus on the ones that are saved. Ab absolutely. And thank you so much for the work you do. Thank it's you. Appreciate good that. work, and we need more of it. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us this evening. Follow us on Facebook, on NativeVoiceTV.org, and on YouTube. See you next week. Good night.